Hey guys, how's it going? I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but I procrastinated and doing it right at the last minute now. And uh, so I've got two tickets to AEW All Out. And um, <clears throat> they'll be going tomorrow. And right now it is almost 9 o'clock p.m. on Friday night, and I'm getting ready to go to work. I get off at 5 a.m., and uh, I'm going to have to wake up around 8 a.m., which is kind of normal for me, but uh, it's not normal that I go to Chicago and spend all day and all night there and then come back. So um, we're going to be leaving, you know, um, I'm going to be leaving around at least 8.30 probably in the morning uh, because the parking lot for this event opens at 11 and a little bit worried about, you know, th there's 3,000, around 3,000 spots. And, you know, the arena holds a lot more, even though people are going to be staying at hotels and getting taxis there. But I'm sure there will be a lot of people parking, and uh, so we got to make sure that we have parking. And we're still going to arrive there, you know, around 1 or 2 o'clock. So it's going to be open for a while, but I think that hopefully we'll be good. There's going to be like a party, like a free party with wrestlers and music um, across from the arena starting at 2 until the show starts at 5. Um, the show, the doors open at 5, and there should be a um, pre-show called the buy-in that's free uh, for an hour from 6 to 7 Central Time, and that will be available on YouTube, I think, to watch to uh, for free, if anybody's interested in that. But... Um, <clears throat> very excited about this show, and I just wanted to run down the card and give my thoughts about this really quick before I go in um, to work. And also, a uh, brother uh, donated these shirts to me, really uh, awesome. This is a Cody Rhodes Thronebreaker shirt. This was from their first big uh, pay-per-view, and this all-out that I'm going to is like their second big pay-per-view. It's supposed to be their biggest pay-per-view of the year. Um... He did this at uh, Double or Nothing. He came out with this entrance, and there was a throne in the entranceway. And the throne kind of represents this wrestler, Triple H, who is Vince McMahon's son-in-law uh, in WWE. And, uh, and I think it kind of represents the WWE as a whole as well. Uh, it's just kind of like taking a shot at the other company when he came out and he hit this uh, throne with the sledgehammer and also Triple H uses the sledgehammer so he used like his own weapon to, to smash his throne and he's saying you know basically that hey there's another big company around now and uh, so this is a really beautiful design uh, I thought this shirt looked amazing and it's got the AEW logo on the sleeve um, but what I'll probably be wearing tomorrow will be this SCU shirt it's pretty simple, but I really thought it was cool. It's like a um, SCU stands for SoCal Uncensored. It's like a three-man group of Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, and then Scorpio Sky. And Christopher Daniels is like, uh, you know, he's been around the business for a long time. He's really great. All three of these guys are amazing, and um, I love them. They're, they're probably my favorite team, and they were one of the, f I think they were like the first, um, people to wrestle on the uh, on Double or Nothing when it started and uh, when the official show started and I really enjoyed that match a lot and so uh, he also donated a, and then there's the AEW logo too but he also donated a shirt uh, for my cousin that uh, says uh, a boy and his dinosaur another team and um, a boy and his dinosaur is uh, I gotta think. One of them is Luchasaurus, this really tall guy that wears like a dinosaur, like lizard kind of mask. And um, the other one is Luke Perry's son, and his name is Jungle Boy. And he's like sh shorter and, and skinnier, and so they're a team. And then they have like an even shorter guy with them named Marco Stunt. And on the uh, boy in his dinosaur shirt, it has Jungle Boy riding on Luchasaurus, and it's like car cartoonish, and it looked kind of like a video game style, I thought. When I showed it to my cousin, he really liked it, and he um, noticed that it looks like Morio riding Yoshi, and I don't know why I didn't get, get that, but he's right, that's what it looks like. So, uh, that's a really cool shirt, and uh, at the time when I gave him that shirt, 
I was like, uh, you know, they're not even announced for the show yet. I'm like, they might not even be there. And I was like, well, I'm probably going to wear this SCU shirt. They're probably not going to be there. They might not be there either because they're not announced yet. And uh, lo and behold, they have a match against each other now. So that's going to be really cool. Um, even though my cousin said he's probably going to be chanting for SCU too because he really likes them a lot. But I think that Luchasaurus and uh, Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt are going to win that match. But because a lot of people are really uh, high on that team. So, I've also got this uh, shirt as well, Kenny Omega, and I've never seen him wrestle before, and I'm really excited. It says, change the world, and um, so I like this shirt a lot too, but I probably won't wear this tomorrow, um, and it's got the AEW logo, and so, there's that. Um, those are amazing shirts, thank you for those. I'll be wearing them all the time, but I'll be wearing the SCU one tomorrow. Now, I just want to run down the card really quick. So, we're going to start off with the buy-in, that free show. And they're going to have basically two matches there. One's a tag team match with the private party versus Angelico and Jack Evans. And then there's a Casino Battle Royal, the Women's Casino Battle Royal, which will be really cool. And I think there's like 21 participants in that. And they've announced, you know, um, a handful, 10 or 12 of them. But um, there's going to be a lot of surprises still that we don't know. First of all, with the tag team match, I've never seen any of these guys live. I've known Angelico and Jack Evans for a long time. They've been on Lucha Underground and other promotions. They're very cool. Jack Evans does a lot of backflips and handsprings and all that stuff. He's very athletic and he's like a monkey in the ring, just doing crazy flips. Uh, always like a cat, always landing on his feet and stuff. Um, so they're an amazing team. From what I've seen a private party, they're really amazing too. And they are kind of getting the push right now. So I'm going to predict that private party wins. And this should be a great match. And so if you guys want to tune in and check that out, if you like athletic uh, matches, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be entertaining. So the Casino Battle Royal I'm really psyched for. I thought that the one thing that AEW kind of lacked was a really strong women's division. They had, you know, maybe a few women who I thought were really good, but uh, altogether they didn't have a whole lot altogether, and I wasn't impressed with all the ones that they had really. But this totally changes things. So this is definitely what they needed. And um, they've introduced a lot of new women that are going to be in this. And I don't know that all of them are signed with AEW. Or if this is just like a one-time deal for some of them. But, uh, you know, Brandy Rhodes, Cody Rhodes' wife, is going to be in there. Awesome Kong is one of the big ones that's going to be in there. And uh, Jazz is an old veteran that's going to be in there. Uh, Roddy Piper's daughter is going to be in there. I didn't even know he had a daughter or that she wrestled. Her name is Teal Piper. And so Roddy Piper was famous back in the you know late 80s, early 90s or whatever. And uh, he wore the, the kilt and had a lot of energy. He was in the movie They Live, which is really good. And uh, I think that he had a lot of crossover appeal, kind of like Hulk Hogan. A lot of people probably know who Roddy Piper is. Could be wrong, but... Uh, so it's going to be special to see his daughter. I don't know how actually good she'll be in the ring, but uh, really interested in that. I'm not really sure who will win this. Uh, there was this, I think her name was Kylie Ray, who wrestled for him, and she's been gone. And I don't know if she's coming back. Um, a lot of them think, a lot of people think that Britt Baker will win. This Dr. Britt Baker, she's like a dentist. Um, there's some others that are supposed to be. I can't really think of the names that are supposed to be pretty big. I don't know if Allie's been uh, announced. Yeah, okay, Allie's been announced for the match. I'm just going to go out and let and say that Allie's going to win. She lost against Brandy Rhodes, um, but Brandy Rhodes kind of had some help from Awesome Kong. I think that maybe Asia Kong or Aja Kong will be in the match, and they've kind of had a feud, uh, Awesome Kong and Aja Kong, and they will eliminate each other or something. And uh, they'll, So I don't think that Awesome Kong's going to win, which a lot of people predict. I think it's going to be somebody else, and uh, I'm going to go with Allie, which, uh, you know, she's pretty popular. She was in, in TNA, and um, 
she already had that match with Brandy Rhodes, and I think that uh, you know maybe they'll. So the winner of this battle royal is going to go on to wrestle uh, the winner of another match, I believe, at their first television televised show on, on TNT in October, and it's going to be for the women's title. And that match is going to happen later on and all out the other two women who are fighting for the number one contendership. Um, let's see. I don't know. It's the, the, the battle royal is like an over, over the top battle royal. Somebody gets thrown over the top rope and both feet touch the outside. They're eliminated. That's how that works. So it's just going to be a really fun, chaotic match with a lot of women in there. And so... Then we're going to start the real show, the main all-out pay-per-view. The pay-per-view cost is going to cost like $50 to order if you're going to order it. There's lots of different ways. I think you can order it on satellite and cable and stuff, or you can order it online through different services. Um, the first match they have listed here, which might not, this might not actually be the order of the, the matches, but they've got SCU versus Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt, like I said. This will be an amazing match. And I'm going to predict that Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt win. And a lot of people think SCU will win because they're a great team and, you know, they got veterans and everything. But I think that Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy are, um, a lot of people like them. And uh, they're new and fresh, and I think they're going to push them to the top. So maybe SCU cheats or something, though. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to call Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt win that one. Then they've got Riho and Hikiru Shida. Now, this is the two women. These are the two like Japanese women. I think they're Japanese. They will wrestle each other, and the winner of this match will face the winner of the Women's Battle Royal on the inaugural uh, TNT show. And I don't know a whole lot about these. They've wrestled some on some of the other shows. It'll probably be a really good match. A lot of people are saying that Riho will win, and um, it's hard to call. Riho's really young. Um, I'm going to go with the opposite, and I'll pick Hikiru Yoshida. And, you know, I can definitely see Riho winning, but um, Shida's the older, more experienced one. Maybe they're going to wait on Riho. So, I don't know. I'm going to go with Shida. Next is going to be a match that could end up being one of my favorite matches. It's going to be Darby Allen versus Joey Janela versus Jimmy Havoc. It's a triple threat match. Now, all three of these guys are hardcore wrestlers. I love hardcore wrestling. I haven't seen any good, really good hardcore wrestling for quite some time. And, um, you know, this match is now sponsored by Cracker Barrel, which is interesting. So they're calling it the Cracker Barrel Clash. And uh, Jimmy Havoc has said... Um, that he wants to bust a barrel over everybody's heads. So I've got this idea that there's going to be barrels involved in the match, like wooden barrels, and who knows what else. Maybe there's going to be a lot of weapons thrown around, you know, the outside of the ring or inside the ring, and, you know, they can just grab these and start going at it with each other. Everybody expects this to be a really violent match, and I do expect that it will be. don't know if it'll be bloody or not, but there's probably going to be a lot of weapons used and just chaotic stuff, and... I'm probably going to love this match, okay? I'm not like, I'm not going in thinking that this is going to be the match that I'm really going to um, like, but I know that there's like a really high potential that it could be. Darby Allen, I think, will be the winner. He went to a time limit draw with Cody Rhodes, and so it seems like they're really uh, pushing him. Uh, but then again, Jimmy Havoc uh, is also one that could win it. Uh, I don't see Joey Janela winning it at all, but uh, I'm going to go with Darby Allen. Next is the Best Friends versus the Dark Order. This is part of a tag team tournament uh, that's going to be for the championships, and I'm not sure how it, how it all works. I've seen the Best Friends live in per person, and uh, me and my cousin both have, and they're great. The Dark Order we haven't seen. I'm not sure what I think about them, um, but a lot of people are saying the Dark Order will probably win, and that's probably who I'm going to go with, too, because they're new. And um, they want to push them over. The best friends have been around for a long time. They don't need to win this. I don't really know. This is one of the matches I don't know that I'm really too excited for. But I think it'll be good. I think um, <clears throat> Cody versus Sean Spears. This is probably the match that I'm most looking forward to now. It used to be Kenny Omega and John Moxley. <clears throat> but this match has a lot of story behind it. Cody Rhodes and Sean Spears. 
They're both guys that have been in the WWE. Uh, Sean Spears was Ty Dillinger, the perfect 10, and they really underutilized him. And I've seen him have some great matches there, but, you know, they rarely used him. So he's come to AEW, and hopefully things are going to change, and he's, he's in the spotlight now. Sean Spears is going to have Tully Blanchard in his corner, who was, I think, one of the four horsemen a long time ago. And um, <clears throat> he had some feuds with Cody's dad, Dusty Rhodes. Cody's supposed to have somebody in his corner. We don't know who it is yet. Um, it could be this wrestler, MG, MJF, that everybody likes. It's been around Cody, who's kind of heelish, and people think, you know, maybe NJF will kind of turn on Cody. I would like to see Sean Spears win this. Okay, I really like Cody a lot, and um, Cody is basically the good guy going to the sea. When Sean Spears got hired for AEW, Cody Rhodes said that Sean Spears was a good hand, and uh, Sean Spears took offense to that. He's better than a good hand, you know, he's a main event player, and he wanted to prove that. He came into the ring and he hit Cody Rhodes with a steel chair right in the head, and it cut the back of Cody Rhodes' head, and he bled a lot all over the ring. And so this match could be very violent. This match could be bloody. This is going to be an old-school fight between these two guys, and um, I think the crowd's really going to be hot for this match, and uh, very exciting. So I'm going to call Sean Spears. They, I would like to see him get the rub in this one. I'd like to see him, um, you know, not do what the WWE did. I know even if he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cody and still loses but puts on a great match, he's, you know, he's still seen, like, up there in a the higher echelon. But I really think they should just give him the win. Uh, next is a match that a lot of people and my cousin think will be the match of the night. It will be the ladder match for the AAA Tag Team Titles. AAA is a division in Mexico that they're kind of partnered with. Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, uh, the Lucha Brothers, which me and my cousin have seen live in person, and they're amazing. I actually got pictures with both of them, and I've got a shirt from Phoenix that I bought from him, and the Young Bucks is who they're going to be wrestling. And so uh, these are two of the top tag teams out there. Do They both do a lot of flips, a lot of dangerous moves, and this is a ladder match. It's going to be ultra-violent, and the only thing is that Phoenix seemed to be injured not too long ago, have like a um, leg issue or something. Hopefully he's going to be recuperated. Um, that's going to stink if there's going to be like some limitations on this, but they're going to go all out just like this show is named, and there's probably going to be bent ladders and busted ladders and busted heads and... You know, this match could be nasty, but it's going to be on the edge of your seat, thrilling. And, uh, you know, because it's for the AAA tag team titles, I got to, and Pentagon and Phoenix are going in the champions. I think they're going to leave the champions. I don't see any reason for the Young Bucks to win the AAA titles again. They've had them before. But we're, I'm going to go with, man. You know, because I really thought the Young Bucks was going to win this, but once I found out it was for the AAA tag titles, I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, the Young Bucks is like the top team, but I think Pentagon and Phoenix are going to win this. I think, I think the last time I saw them wrestle, the Young Bucks won, so I'll say Pentagon and Phoenix will win. Next is a big controversial match, Kenny Omega versus Pac, because originally it was scheduled to be Kenny Omega versus John Moxley. John Moxley debuted at the end of their first pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, and uh, his name was Dean Ambrose in the WWE, so he was a top star. He left like hot from the WWE straight to AEW, and um, they've had a feud. And this was going to be the match that I was looking forward to the most, but John Moxley has injured his elbow or something. He's got staph infection. He's got MRSA or whatever. He had to have surgery. So he couldn't make it. So they had to get a replacement. So they got Pac, and his name was Neville in WWE. Pac was supposed to be at Double, double or Nothing uh, to wrestle Hangman Page, but he had a title on another company, and they had limitations. <laughs> on what he could do or something. I don't know. There was a disagreement, so they had to cancel that match, so they put Hangman Page in the Battle Royal, and he won, and he's wrestling Chris Jericho on this show. Oh, for the title. <sighs> Sorry. But a lot of people think that this will be a better a better match. <coughs> oh, man. Oh, 
Dang it. Allergies. Sinuses. Mm. So. This will probably be the match of the night. <coughs> oh. Kenny Omega is known to put on fantastic matches, and he hasn't really put on one of those uh, great matches in AEW yet. Every match he's done, uh, I've liked. He wrestled Chris Jericho, he's wrestled uh, Shima, and uh, I like those matches, but he hasn't put on one of those five-star <laughs> those five star classics, one of those wrestling clinics, and Pac is the man to do it with because he is very has a lot of endurance, just like Kenny Omega. They'll just go forever, from, like the whole match length, and it'll be back and forth. But I fully expect Kenny Omega to win this. Well, a lot of people say that uh, Pac will win, but um, you know, a lot of these matches people are divided on. It's kind of hard to tell who's going to win. Um, but I'm going to go with Kenny Omega, but this match probably will be the match of the night. At first, I hated the news that John Moxley was out. It almost killed the whole pay-per-view with me, for me, because that was the thing I was looking so forward to. Even though I love every other match, I think this card's, like, perfect up and down. I mean, every... There's no scrubs on this card, you know. It's... They're all top-level matches, and, um... But, you know, after a few days of thinking about it, after seeing a lot of people's comments, how this will probably be, you know, maybe the match of the year and stuff because of the way that these guys can go at it. And now I'm psyched about it. I'm looking forward to it. And I think when it's actually happening in front of me, it's going to blow my mind. So we're going to go into the main event, which is Chris Jericho, one of the most popular people on this entire show, versus Adam Hangman Page. He won the Battle Royal at Double or Nothing to be the number one contender, and Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega wrestled for the number one contendership, and Chris Jericho beat Kenny Omega. And that's another reason I think Kenny Omega, well, he, he won one of the last matches, but... And because the feud with Kenny Omega and John Moxley will continue, you know, Kenny Omega needs to go in strong into that, but who knows? Anyways, Jericho and Hangman, you know, um... I'm interested in this match just because it's for their world title, and uh, this is the history-making point of this show, that it's going to be awesome to be a part of this because it's the first time they're going to crown their champion, and if this company goes on for, you know, a decade, for years and years to come, I hope that this title has a very long lineage, I hope this title becomes very prestigious, and um, <clears throat> the title looks beautiful, I know that. Um... But, you know, it could go either way. I see a lot of people saying, because either they're going to go with Chris Jericho, which would be a smart move because he has all the name value to draw people in to watch the show, or they're going to say, you know, we're a, a revolutionary company, we're going to do things that the other companies don't do, we're going to push new stars, so we're going to give Adam Page the title. So, I could see it going either way, but... Ugh. You know, Adam Page was saying that if he won the title, he'd like to leave the arena on a horse because he's got the kind of cowboy persona. But they said that the uh, building code or whatever wouldn't allow that. But I think that would be so awesome if he left on a horse. I, I would love to see that. Um, but I don't know. I'm probably going to go with Chris Jericho. It's really hard to call, but uh, Chris Jericho is probably the smarter move, you know. And um, there's no shame in Adam Page losing to him because he's one of the greatest of all time. And, um, you yeah, know, Chris Jericho's amazing. I expect it to be a good match. It might be a match that I'm surprised by. It might be, you know, better than I would think. Because I'm kind of like, yeah, it'll be good. It's not going to be as good as Kenny Omega and Pac. And, um... You know, like I've heard some people say it's kind of in an odd position because... You know, if it's going to go the uh, traditional wrestling, you know, put on a great wrestling match, it's probably going to be overpowered by Kenny Omega versus Pac. If they go, like, a hardcore route, like, they're going to have tables involved and stuff like Chris Jericho does, then they're going to be overtaken by the triple threat, you know, Cracker Barrel match, because that's going to be ultra-violent, and the ladder match. And so, you know, there's still going to be a lot of intrigue because it's for the title, and it's the main event, but it's like, how are they going to top 
all the stuff that's before it. I mean, the card is so stacked, you know, it's like, is pe are people just going to be exhausted by this point? Mm -hmm. But somehow they'll make it interesting. Somehow it'll be really good. And um, it'll probably be like the match of Higman's career. So I'm going to go with Chris Jericho wins it. Um, what happens after this? I hope that CM Punk debuts. Uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation back and forth whether CM Punk's going to be there or not. A lot of people are saying no because CM Punk has said no himself, but then, you know, maybe he's keeping secrets. You never know what to believe. Um, he was at an event in Chicago today, I think, called StarCast. You know, maybe it's tomorrow, too. I don't know. But uh, he's in Chicago, basically, and he's going to be signing autographs and stuff. Does that mean that he's going to be there? No. But uh, it makes you speculate even more that he could be. CM Punk's a huge star. He was a huge star in the WWE. He's had some grudges with the WWE, and if he came to AEW, it would be like a huge shot at WWE. And it would be awesome to be there to experience that. I hope it happens. Uh, if not, I won't be disappointed with, you know, the card as a whole, with the show. And um, I'm probably going to lose my voice after the show by yelling so much. And uh, really looking forward to this, guys. So I don't know what else to say. It's almost a 30-minute long video. But those are my predictions. And uh, hopefully then I'll record the results afterwards and let you know how it all went down. So thanks for watching, guys. God bless.